Hello friends, Julian here. Welcome to the second part of my quest to make a bronze model of the moon, complete with craters, mountains. I want a cool bronze moon. Okay, 30 second recap. In part one, I did this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Oh my God, I've had too much coffee. Let's go. See part one if you want to see any of those things in more detail. I'd like to say hi to my new subscribers from the William Osman channel. Thank you so much for subscribing. I woke up this morning to a ton of new subscribers. It's awesome. So today I make the investment plaster mold and burn out the 3D printed PLA moon patterns. But for some reason, I'm really procrastinating on the mixing of the investment. So while I was plucking up the courage to do it, I saw that I had a lonely moon hemisphere I'd had a failed print, so I decided to reprint it so that I can make a second large moon if I need to. So now I have enough parts for two small moons, two medium moons, and two large moons. I've also printed a load of little tubes and gates for the moons. They'll make life a lot easier when it comes to assembly. Here I'm trying to fill any large gaps on the models with soft wax. I did some calculations and now I've got more moons, I might not have enough investment. In fact, I've definitely not got enough investment to do the larger moons right now. I have ordered some more. This might be a good thing as I'm now kind of forced to do this in small stages, which in my experience is always good. Let's start again. Right, time to mix up the investment. So that should be exact. I've got to come clean here. I totally screwed up the estimate on how much I needed. It's huge. There's a mistake. It's got to be a mistake. I made way too much. I got confused. Something's not right. I threw a little tantrum. If this, if this fills this up, I'll be very cross. Once mixed, this investment only gives six minutes of working time. It didn't go well. Oh my God, I've got so much left. Right. Mix. During this first go, I was pretty disorganized and I ran out of time. So I didn't manage to vacuum the plaster to remove any of the air bubbles. I've still got loads left. So it's at least double wrong. Oh, that's so frustrating. I'm tempted. It's too late now, of course. All right, let's try and vibrate. So that's my six minutes. And I only managed to vibrate the moulds for a second or two. It just didn't seem very effective. I think I was doing it wrong. Well, that is... A bit of a shame. I can see it's going thick already. Fail. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. I'm sorry I'm not being very cheerful. It's because of my running. I need to I need to quit running. <laughs> oh, this sucks. I hate I hate wasting stuff. Because it's not a cheap hobby. So my six minutes run out. I'll just have to wait and see how they turn out. I guess this is why it's good I'm not doing the large moons yet. These little ones can be my practice moons. Don't forget, each half of a large moon took 28 hours to print, so I really don't want to waste those. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe this will work great. Who knows? We live to fight another day. Oh, I'm in a much better mood today. I must have just slept badly. It's the, it's the running. It just absolutely knackers me out. So, today, 
rather than pour more plaster molds and do all this business, here's the, the other one. I'm going to do these to completion first and then if they go well we'll sort of upscale and do the medium ones next and then if they go well we'll do the big mothers. This one's hollow and this one is solid. So I'm just going to pour the whole thing in and see what happens with that one. I removed the moulds from the plastic tubs. Nice. This is the hollow one with the core. I put them in the kiln to start the burnout process. Now, as usual, I've never done this before, so I'm sort of making it up as I go, but I did find this super chart online. There's a link in the description. So I tried my best to follow it. Now, obviously I'm not an expert, but I get the impression it's good to pour the molten metal into the mold while it's still hot from the kiln. And that's all well and good, except I'd run out of time for this day. So I switched the kiln off with a view to doing the high temperature part of the PLA burnout the next day. So this is the first time I've used my renovated kiln, so I'm keeping a very close eye on the temperatures. I need to get it hot enough to Ooh. completely burn out the PLA plastic moon patterns, but not so hot as to destroy the delicate moulds. Oh, 700 at the back. 610, 615, 630. I think that's hot enough. Now what I'd really like to do is blow out the mold. Uh, don't really know what to do now. Let me turn off this. Well, it seems, well, it's glowing red hot in there, but whether it's, um, all the debris is blown out, I don't know. I'm gonna get the uh, furnace going and get the bronze all nice and molten, and then we'll pour these two and see how they go. So I had a lot of trouble getting the furnace lit this time. It had taken so long to light that the diesel had pooled in the chamber, so I had to be careful not to turn up the air too much until the diesel had been used up. It was very dramatic and not in a good way. Yeah, still too much diesel. So I turned it off and cut. It's to burn away. There's probably like a little bit too much diesel in that tank. It's the one drawback with this. I'm going to wait for that to burn off, then I'll restart the diesel. So I don't want it all to wash off at the same time, it'll be a big old fireball.
I hope you're all enjoying my new fall clothing collection. It's very much based on that derelict look that was very hot last year. 